Avast, ye chem lovers. Yeah, I just made that up. Uh, we're in our fourth video lecture. Uh, we're going to hit up groups and periods in this lecture. And just as a tip and a reminder, if you're trying to do just these lecture videos once, don't. Do it twice or three times. Take the notes one time and then rewind it and watch it through all and see for the flow a second time, okay? And then also, try and do the practice pages related to these lectures before you come into the class, okay? You're going to finish your packets much more efficiently. You're going to have real questions to ask in class, and it's just going to be working better for you and your learning opportunities, okay? So we're going to cover the organizing of the PT into rows and columns. Periods, electron shells and period organization. Well, each period represents the number of electron shells or orbitals or energy levels. Remember, all three of those are synonyms, if I can spell correctly, synonyms that you should be familiar with. Okay, I will refer to an orbital as any one of the above. So will the Regents exam be prepared. But each period represents the number of electron shells that are present in a particular atom. Elements in period one only have one shell of electrons. Period two have two shells of electrons and so forth. Okay, period three, four, five, guess what? Three shells, four shells, five shells. Properties of elements change when you migrate across a period from left to right. So as you go from left to right, so you're not only going from sodium to magnesium to alumina, et cetera, all the way onward and so forth. You're adding one more electron to the energy level, the external energy level, the valence shell, which changes the properties of the element. You're also adding more protons and neutrons and all that kind of stuff. Yes, that is also true. But generally speaking, left to right, you're adding an electron to the valence shell, which is changing the properties of the particular element compared to its previous neighbor. So the left side of the periodic table is mostly the metallic elements, and the right side of the periodic table is mostly the non-metallic elements. So as you go from the left to the right, you're becoming more non-metallic each step of the way. So you take an element that was super metallic, like sodium, and each step you take to the right, past magnesium to aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, chlorine, or argon, you're going to become more non-metallic. So each element to the right of it is more non-metallic and less metallic as you go. What else we got here? Each step leads to more properties and less metallic properties. I guess I should have clicked before I described that, but hey, moving forward. Groups is is. Valence electrons in the groups. Well, the last electrons added to an element are on the outermost energy level, which means that all elements in the same group have the same outer electron configuration. If you look at the periodic table's electron configurations, look at the last number in the sequence, everybody in group 1 and 2, and 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, follow that rule. The only set of elements that don't is that giant extended family in the middle called the transition elements, groups 3 through 12. They don't always have the last same electron outer configuration. But Groups 1, groups 2, and 13 through 18 follow that rule. I'll say this right here. 1, 2, and 13 through 18 follow the rule. So squeeze that into your notes there. Um, since they have the same number of valence electrons, they will react in similar ways, which means that they belong in the same family. And so Mosley when he arranged his periodic table the way he did, knew this. The similar ways they react means they should belong in the same stack, and that's how we get the periodic table that we see today. Properties of elements do not change down a group from top to bottom. They're known as families because they share those similar physical and chemical properties due to their common valence electrons. While their properties do change a little bit, it's not enough to say, listen, you guys down at the bottom of the group belong in a different group. No, they're very, very similar and mostly very consistent. When you are writing Lewis diagrams, remember, the element symbol with only its valence electrons is drawn. First two electrons go together, and then we put one of them 
around the bus at a time until you have a full up electron shell of eight maximum. So essentially, Lewis diagrams are trying to remind us of the fact that an element belongs in a specific group. And that group has got specific properties related to that number of dots of electrons that are around. Let's see what else we got here. Ah, a Google Classroom assignment. Written notes, page 7 in your periodic table packet. Remember, watch it twice or three times to get the notes, and then get the flow, and then get the understanding. There are some practice pages after a Google Classroom assignment, of course, that I would love for you to do ahead of time. Okay? As we progress throughout the year, those practice pages are going to become more and more a part of homework and what you do to just get ready to be in class. Okay? So next video is going to be names and properties of groups. It's going to be a long one, so that's why I wanted to keep this one short. Thanks for your time.